Hi friends, it's Elizabeth Stone. Welcome to An Invitation. Today, I'd like to invite you to learn how to make some easy appetizers for the holidays with brie. I'm gonna teach you how to make four different super easy recipes with brie. Okay, so the first one we're gonna do today is a brie wrapped in pastry, or we call it brie en croute, if you wanna say it in the French way. So super, super simple, and I'm gonna show you how to do this. So this is puff pastry, this is raw puff pastry. You can buy this at the grocery store in the freezer section. Pepperidge Farm makes a beautiful puff pastry. And what I usually do is start on a cutting board with a little flour, and I'm just gonna spread it here because we don't want the pastry to stick to it while we're making this, okay? Again, this is super simple. And then I, I've just let this thaw a little bit so it is uh, pliable and ready to go. And then you'll see what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put a little more flour here on the top because I'm gonna use the rolling pin to thin it out just a little bit. Okay, so here we go. Look, I'm just gonna roll it and see how nice and easy it goes. And it thins out. All right, now. We could use this big brie if we wanted to, or I'm gonna show you how to do a small brie because most of us at home are only having a few people over. If you wanna do it with a big brie, you need to thin this out a little bit more. But if you're using it with a small brie, as you can see, this is an eight ounce brie, okay? And I'm actually literally gonna just cut a piece of this off because we won't need all of this and I'm just gonna put it over here on the side. And so then I'm gonna put this here. Now, there are a lot of things you can use to put with the brie if you wanna do it on crude. My very favorite is raspberry preserves and pecans. Super easy, you can buy them both at the grocery store. So that's what I'm doing today. You could do orange marmalade, you could do fig preserves, you could do mushrooms, you could do things that aren't sweet if you want to. So this is just some raspberry preserves. I'm gonna put a nice dollop on the bottom right where I'm gonna put the brie. And then I'm gonna set the brie right on top of that. Press it down a little bit. And then I'm gonna put a little more on top because you know that's what makes it good. So you don't wanna skimp on your raspberry preserves. So we're just gonna smooth that out just a little bit. And you know what, it doesn't have to be perfect because nobody's gonna see the inside of this until you cut it. So then they won't see it. So now I'm gonna take some pecans. These are just pecan pieces. You can use them just straight like they are from the grocery store or what we like to do is toast them just a little bit for about five to 10 minutes before we do them. So now you've got your pecans and your raspberry and your pastry. So now this is the trick to really making this work. I'm gonna crack one egg in here and then you add a little bit of water to it. I'm just adding a touch of water from my water bottle. Just a little bit. And I'm going, I've got a brush here and I'm just gonna mix this up till the water gets all mixed in with the egg. And it's nice and thin and smooth. You see how quick that is? What this does is with that little bit of flour and this egg, it is like glue. So what I normally do is I come around and I brush this all around the outside of the pastry. And then as I start to fold it, you will see it's gonna stick very nicely. All right, so now I'm gonna start here. Everybody does this a different way, but this is how I do it. I pull it over on the corner and kind of tuck it under. And then I come this way and kind of tuck it under. Now, I may have a little too much dough here, so I think I'm gonna cut a little bit of that off. Wouldn't hurt even if you did have it. And we're gonna put a little more egg wash here. Don't forget, this is the glue. And we're gonna pull that over like that. And I'm gonna do the same thing on this other side. Little more egg wash. My theory is you can't have too much egg wash. And then I'm gonna put this all like that. And so now I'm gonna flip it over and look how beautiful that is. Now, this is the other thing I like to do. I'm gonna put this on a baking sheet and with some parchment paper. You wanna put it on some parchment paper 
so that it doesn't stick to the pan. You can also use spray on the pan. Now, if you want to get fancy, I always do some egg wash right on the top. You'll see when it comes out of the oven, it makes it really pretty and this nice golden brown. And you just get it all the way around. And if you are feeling super fancy, you can take a piece of your leftover dough. You could use a cookie cutter and make a Christmas tree, or you could make a heart. And I, it's fall right now, so what I'm gonna do is make a leaf. So I'm just gonna cut a leaf out of this pastry shell, just like that. And we're gonna pull that right out. And then I'm gonna make some little cuts in it so when it cooks, it's gonna look like a fall leaf. Okay, and then we're gonna place that right on top, like that, and I'm gonna finish it with just a little more. We're gonna go into the oven, 350, until this is golden brown. It's probably gonna take 20, 25 minutes, but we'll be right back and show you the finished product. Okay, look at this. We have our little brie en croute or our puff pastry wrap brie. Look how beautiful it is. That leaf turned out really nice on the top. So I'm just gonna take it here. It's just been out of the oven a couple of minutes and I'm gonna move it right to this tray here. And then I'm gonna show you how to make this tray look really beautiful. So one of the things, again, we were talking about earlier is how to make things look appealing to the eye. And one of the things I like to do, we've got a lot of space here to go around the brie. I never put the crackers or the bread here because once you cut the brie, it's gonna make everything wet. You don't wanna make your bread or your crackers wet. So we're gonna garnish this with some fresh fruits and then we'll put the bread on the side. So I have some red grapes here. This is all about what you have in your house or you can plant it. I did some green grapes, another mandarin that I have. So we're just gonna cut this. I'm gonna cut it in half and cut it into little wedges and that way people can pick them up and eat them if they want to. And again, look what's happening here. Look at that color. Isn't that pretty? Now I've got some fresh figs. Figs are in season right now. I love fresh figs. They're not always in season. You have to catch them either in April or October, but I like to just cut them in half, lay them right there. And look how pretty this is for people to walk up to this. It's so appealing. And I'm just gonna cut these in half. I love to open up fruits because the inside, look how pretty that is on the inside. And look at the color and how it pops. So we're gonna come here with that. And um, I think I'm gonna stop there, but we could add some apple. Well, maybe I'll just add a little apple and some blueberries. Why not? We'll just do it all. Why don't we just do it all? So I'm gonna do a little blueberries here like that. And then I'm gonna take this apple. I'm gonna tell you a trick about apples. If you wanna cut your apples early, you want to put the slices in orange juice and it will keep them from turning brown on you. Orange juice, just pure orange juice. You can do them in lemon juice, but lemon juice changes the flavor. Orange juice just makes them a little bit sweet. So look how pretty that is with the green. And then we can put a little fresh herbs on here, maybe a little bit of thyme. I've got some thyme over here. We'll put that under there and maybe a little fresh mint on this other side like this. And look how beautiful that is. When people walk up to the table, it's just gorgeous. And then we will cut a slice into it in a few minutes and you will see all that goodness ooze out. These are phyllo cups. You can buy these at the grocery store. So they're just little phyllo cups. They're already baked. Now, to make this recipe, it's very simple. I'm going to take four ounces of brie. So this is that same brie that we had here, but this is a four ounce piece. And I'm just gonna cut the outer edge off, okay? Because this part is hard. 
The skin on the top and the bottom is not hard. So we're just gonna get rid of that. And I'm gonna set this here. I've also got four ounces of cream cheese. All right, and then one egg yolk. Now all of that is going to go into your Cuisinart for about a minute till it gets nice and soft. And then after it gets nice and soft, you're gonna take one more egg and mix it in with that. And then what you end up with is this nice, beautiful liquid. As you can see, I'll pour it in here. It's nice and thin. And if you put it in a squirt bottle, it doesn't have to be in a squirt bottle, you can use a spoon. Then I'm just gonna go through and fill each of these up. You can make this mixture ahead of time. You can put it in the refrigerator. You can actually freeze this mixture if you want to and pull it out when you're ready. But this way, if you're having people over for dinner or for cocktails, it's just super easy. As you can see, voila. Now, we're gonna put this in the oven at 350 for 10 to 15 minutes and we'll be right back. All right, now I have pulled these brie tartlets out of the oven. Aren't they gorgeous? Look, they're nice and golden brown. They're crispy on the bottom. So they're, they're, these are such a great item. Now I will tell you this, you can stop right here and you can put these in the freezer. They will last, if you put them in an airtight uh, Ziploc bag, an airtight bag, They'll last for a couple of months. So you can make these ahead of time and then right before you're ready to serve them, just put them back on a pan, put them in the oven for about 10 minutes and get them nice, hot and crispy. So, but these have just come out. They're still warm. We have a little bit of fig preserves um, that we're gonna do. You could do raspberry, but I like just a touch of fig preserves. This just gives it a nice little sweetness. And I'm probably just going to do three or four of these. We don't need to do all of them. Well, we might. We might need to do all of them, but I think we'll just do a few. Serves. And then I'm going to come back with some chopped pistachios. So we just go a little bit on top of the preserves and see it makes, an, it sticks nicely because of the preserves. And then my favorite part of this is a blueberry. These are awfully big blueberries, but I'm just going to put one blueberry right on top, kind of in the middle of that preserves. And these flavors are phenomenal. Blueberry, fig, pistachio. And then we're going to finish it with just a little bit of chives right on top. It doesn't stick very well, but we'll put just a little bit. Okay, so now I'm going to put these up on this tray. Aren't those pretty? They look like they took hours and hours to make, but guess what, they didn't. I'm going to use some herbs on this one only, and that's something you can do, is just do fresh herbs. It's really pretty, and I like to do a mixture of different types of herbs. I'm gonna do some mint and some rosemary, and maybe a little bit of thyme. And so what I do is I kind of just bundle it up. It's almost like a little flower arrangement. And do it like that. And then I'm just gonna lay it right on there. And look how pretty that is. And now you have a beautiful tray to serve your guest. Voila. Of all the brie appetizers I like to do, this is my very favorite. This is the appetizer I call skillet brie. So I have a nice trusty cast iron skillet here. You have to have a cast iron skillet. If you don't have one, go get one. You're gonna want one. If it's not for anything else than this appetizer. So I've got a full uh, two pound brie here that you can buy at the grocery store. And I'm just going to unwrap it. And you will see how simple and easy this is. But the trick to this one is, we're gonna stick this whole brie just like it is. Of course, you wanna get all the paper off because that wouldn't taste very good if we heated that up. Now, we're gonna put all of this, we're gonna put this here, and then I'm gonna put this in the oven for about 15 minutes on 300, so to get a little bit soft.
It's just come out of the oven, and if you look really closely, you can see the brie is slightly oozing there. I'm going to touch it. Look, it's nice and soft. Okay, so what we're going to do to make this skillet brie, there are a lot of different things you can do. These are just my favorite. I've got fig preserves, so I'm going to just put the fig preserves all over the top. This is going to go back in the oven for a few minutes, so what's going to happen is these preserves are going to get all melty and gooey. Oh, it's so good. And if you serve this with some hot French bread, oh, it's one of my favorite things. Again, this is really easy to do if you just have all the ingredients ready. All right, so I've got fig preserves. Now, I love to do candied bacon, and you all have seen my video on how to make candied bacon, but if you just want to use regular bacon, you can do that, but you got to have bacon. Of course, if you're vegetarian, you don't want to use the bacon, but I just always think you can't have too much bacon. You know I'm from Texas. We like bacon on everything. And then I'm going to put some dried cranberries on top like this. Just going to sprinkle them over and it's fine if some of them drop into the pan like this. All right, now this is going to go back in the oven for about 10 more minutes, and then we'll be back and show you the finished product and take a bite. Okay, look at this. This is the skillet brie, and when I tell you this smells good, it's brie and bacon and cranberry and fig preserves. It is to die for. Now, what I'm gonna do, it's kind of brown, so I wanna fix that, so I'm gonna take just some chives. We're gonna go right on top of there, just like that, and then right before you take it out to the table, we're going to go ahead and cut it. Now watch, it's gonna ooze. Look at that. It's oozing out. Oh my goodness, look how pretty that is. And then I'm gonna cut it here, and this makes it easier. Oh, it's oozing a lot, look at it. But that way the guests will start to be comfortable eating it. Look how beautiful that is. And then you just serve it with a little spoon you can let it sit just for a couple of minutes before you put it on the table. You're gonna always, the skillet is hot, so let the skillet cool just a little bit. And you wanna make sure you have it on top of a wooden board or a wooden trivet so that it doesn't burn your table. And um, what I'm gonna do, you'll see in a minute, come back, and I'm gonna put a pretty uh, napkin around the handle so it looks great. So now I'm going to show you the last of the four appetizers that I've done. And honestly, I said the other ones were easy, but the truth is this is the very easiest. So we saved the best for last. So I've taken um, a little four ounce piece of brie. You can use a larger piece. It just depends on how many people you want to have over. And what I usually estimate if you're doing this for a party, you do about two ounces per person is what you want to do. So I have just cut the rind off of this, but I left the top and the bottom on. And now I'm just going to take a knife and cut pieces. So we've got that little piece. I don't like the way that looks, so I'm just going to get rid of that. But I'm going to cut it into little straight pieces, and we're just going to set it up here on the tray. So this is like a one bite appetizer. And if you're really particular and you wanna cut it in squares before you do it so that all the pieces are perfectly the same size, you can do that. But what I find is that most people really don't care if they're perfect sizes or not. And we'll get one more piece out of this and we'll put that there. Now, so we have these pieces up here. I am going to use a little raspberry preserves. So we're gonna take just a dab, and you wanna just put just a little dab on each one, just like that. And remember, this is something you can do earlier in the day if you're having people over for cocktails or dinner, then you don't have to worry about it. This is a great item, it's gluten-free. We have so many friends now that are gluten-free, so we have to give them some options. Of course, if they're dairy-free, this is not a good item. We can pick something else. So, and then I'm gonna take a little bit of pecans. Now, if you wanna be really fun and fancy, you can do a few different things to it. You could put pecans on some, and then now I have a little pistachios on some, like that. And then you could leave one with just the brie and a little bit of chives on top. 
if you're doing Christmas. Isn't that beautiful? Now, the other thing I'm going to do, that's finished. But what I'm going to show you is it's very important when you're creating a tray for your guest that you realize that people eat first with their eyes, second with their nose, and last with their mouth. So you need to stimulate all of the senses. So I always garnish my trays with some fresh fruits and herbs. We traditionally use oranges and strawberries because they're always, almost always available. This is a little mandarin that's in season right now. I just made a slice. I'm going to cut a little slice like that. Strawberry. I'm going to cut the strawberry in half and put it right like that. And then I've got some fresh rosemary over here that I'm just going to cut a little piece off and put that right there. And I've got a little mint. Maybe we'll do some mint on the other side. You can just be creative. If you have edible flowers in your garden, you can use those. But now, see how beautiful that is? So now I've been working with Brie now and I'm ready to taste one of these. So I'm gonna taste one. So look, see, isn't that beautiful with the pistachios? So simple and so easy. Okay, let's check out our other ones that we just made. Okay, friends, look. We have just made four very easy brie appetizers for you to do at home if you want to. We have our skillet brie that has fig preserves, candied bacon, and dried cranberries with a little bit of chives on top. We have our brie tartlets with fig preserves, a blueberry, a little bit of pistachio. We have our brie en croute that we did with raspberry preserves and pecans garnished with all this gorgeous fresh fruit. And very simply, we have our brie bites that I top with different preserves and some with pistachios, some with pecans, and some with chives. So now it is time for me to get to try some of these deliciousness. I'm gonna try this one, it's my favorite. Look how runny and ooey gooey this is. Don't you know that your friends are gonna love this? I always serve it with a spoon and not a knife because you really wanna be able to get some of that goodness in there. And now I'm gonna take a bite. Oh, and the other thing, see how I wrap this beautiful napkin around this hot skillet? That way nobody will burn their hands. You can, any kind of napkin that you have, you can do it. All right, here we go. Mm. It's terrible, you don't wanna eat it, promise you. No, it is awesome. Mm, mm, mm. That is so yummy. I hope you enjoyed learning how to make these brie appetizers today. Thank you for joining us. We are here to make entertaining easy for you. Remember, keep it easy, keep it fun, and most importantly of all, enjoy the experience. Until next time.